Today on Studio One, there are so many shiny rocks to choose from. Today we'll spend a day in the life of a jewelry store manager. Also, more than 70 years old and still performing, we'll tell you about a jazz musician whose trumpeting is legendary. And when an airplane crashes, it's important to figure out why. We'll take you to a school that teaches how to find the cause of crashes. From the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, this is Studio One. Hello everyone and welcome to Studio One. I'm Monty Cashel. And I'm Jill Gustafson. We have many interesting stories for you today. One of them is we have someone here who's going to be in the studio. He's a musician, he's a guitar player, and uh, he's also an inventor. There's so many different kinds of guitars out there. He decided to add one more to the fray. He's invented his own guitar. It's a very special one that can be changed out and modified very easily. Wow, yeah. should be pretty interesting. It's very interesting. You'll have to stick around for that. Also coming up on the show, male teachers are becoming harder to find in schools across the U.S. We'll tell you why many educators are concerned about this trend. And winter is coming. Preparing your body for the chilly weather is important. Later, we'll meet with a woman who will teach us how. Before we get to that, Here's today's news with Sarah Spencer. Thanks, Monty and Jill. President Bush visited Pease Air National Guard Base in New Hampshire on Thursday, six months after the fall of Saddam Hussein. He thanked National Guard members and reservists for their service. It is possible that the service members may be activated and sent to Iraq for duty. Bush wanted to let everyone know that despite what many are reporting, conditions in Iraq are improving. He also stressed again his commitment to combating terror. I came to this office to confront problems directly and forcefully, not to pass them on to other presidents and other generations. Despite Bush's positive speech regarding the situation in Iraq, unrest continues to be a problem in some parts of the country. On Thursday, a car bombing killed eight police officers and wounded 32 onlookers in Baghdad. The car crashed into a police station where it then exploded. The attack occurred in a mainly Shiite neighborhood. This incident follows several Shiite protests demanding the release of a cleric who was arrested on Monday. The recent deaths of three college students in a Minneapolis fire have raised concerns about off-campus housing. Some fire officials and safety groups feel that college students who choose to live off-campus face a greater risk than those in on-campus housing. Campus Fire Watch, a safety newsletter, reported that at least 44 college students have died in off-campus housing fires since January of 2000. It says neglected houses rented by college students are partly to blame for these deaths. These homes often have smoke detectors that don't work. Landlords are required to have working smoke alarms and fire extinguishers in the home. On-campus housing, however, have routine checkups and are built to ensure student safety. Norms, they do, we do inspect those yearly and we walk through and uh, the alarm systems are checked and they do have fire drills at least twice a year there. So dorms are, are very safe in, in that respect. Vian says it's the student's responsibility to take safety seriously. He also says that no matter where they live, it is vital that their smoke alarms work and that they have a home escape plan. After many years of failure, scientists have successfully cloned the first rats. Researchers in Lyon, France announced that they've created two rat clones. These animals are the result of nearly 900 attempts at cloning by the scientists. Rats are more difficult to clone than sheep, cattle, and even mice because of their speedy development. Scientists say the ability to clone rats is a huge breakthrough for medical research. That's because rats are used to study human conditions such as heart disease. The clones will be able to provide greater consistency for genetic research as well. Women have always outnumbered men in the teaching profession, but recently the gap has widened even further. This trend is raising concerns about the newest endangered species, the male educator. Classrooms like this one are rare. Travis Thorvalson is the only male third grade teacher at Ben Franklin Elementary in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Actually, he is one of only four male teachers at the school. Thorvalson decided to become a teacher in his last year of high school, and during college, many questioned his career choice. And there were a lot of comments, like, why, why would you do this, or from people that I wouldn't expect it from, but... The ratio of male to female teachers is at its lowest point in 40 years. Only 20% of teachers are male. 
Education experts find the lack of diversity troubling and believe students without a father at home need male role models. Educators also say that all students may benefit from a male teacher in the classroom. It's really nice for those, especially boys, to have a strong male figure, someone who holds them accountable and cares about the kind of people that they are. Experts say the reason so few men go into teaching may be because they want higher paying jobs with more prestige. Some also may believe that women are a better fit for the job. It's a matter of taking the stereotype stereotype on and just dispelling the myth. Thorvalson already knows that a man can be an effective teacher. You're, you're seeing kids build relationships with you, with others, you helping them with that process, uh, teaching them what growing up and becoming a, a special important person is all about. And that, that impact is, is great. I love that part. Male teachers like Thorvalson are harder to find, and educators hope more men will take up teaching, so a man in the classroom will become a familiar sight. This is Emily Tobin, reporting for Studio One News. The National Education Association is also concerned with recruiting minority teachers. Ninety percent of all U.S. teachers are white. And that's news for now. Monty and Jill? Thanks, Sarah. Well, we've certainly been warm here in this area. Beautiful. Yeah. It's like we've had a second chance at summer around mm -hmm. here. Why don't we go to B.J. Eisen at the Regional Weather Information Center, and he can tell us how the weather is around the nation. Well, Monty and Jill, it seems that we've been seeing summer rebounding back across much of the nation. Uh, we have been seeing some sprinkles down to the, to the south and east, but otherwise mainly above average for much of, the, much of the country. But first, let's take a look at our average temperatures for our viewing areas. The state of North Dakota's averages are 57 and 37 Minneapolis area is right around 61 and 41 but southern Manitoba is at 12 degrees Celsius for their high that's about 55 degrees Fahrenheit otherwise their low temperature 1 degree Celsius and that is about freezing for them otherwise Portland at 65 and 49 as we take a look at our departure from normal uh, we have been seeing very above average temperatures across much of the mid sections of the US and southern Canada as well temperatures anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees, yes 20 degrees in some places above average but that will be changing. What's been causing that though is a big ridge in the polar jet stream allowing some very nice southerly warm air to move into the mid sections of the country allowing for those much, uh, much above average temperatures but that will be uh, changing as we will get a zonal flow from west to east in the jet stream and that will bring average temperatures back for most of the country and below average temperatures for much of the uh, US and Canadian border along with uh, southern uh, Canada as well. Uh, national weather, like I said, a few sprinkles uh, down in the south and east. We are seeing a cold front starting to sweep across the nation, and that will be the first thing, allowing cold Canadian air to, to move back into the country. Some rain showers associated with that as well. We will be seeing hit and miss sprinkles across much of the U.S. Some places will start to dry out, but then they'll have another shot of rain moving in. So really, it's a hit and miss. Much colder air coming in behind all these systems, but uh, we do see high pressure moving in with some clear skies uh, for many parts of the U.S. Here's your Studio One Weather IQ question for today. Which country is credited for developing the first known rain gauge? We have a few choices there, ranging from France to Russia. So, Monty and Jill, we will have the answer to that question, your national forecast, and we'll be talking about some weather instruments all coming up in the second half of the show. Thanks, VJ. What do you think it is? Well, just from the uh, answers he had there, I know it's not U.S. or Canada. That's true. I'll be safe and say Asia I don't know. Asia is always the first to figure out everything. <laughs> All right, well, let's go now to Greg Anchors with sports. Thanks, Monty and Jill. And then there was four. That is the number of teams remaining in this year's Major League Baseball season. The stakes are raised, the tension builds, and the intensity goes up yet another notch as the championship series in both leagues begin. Let's take it to the highlights now. Mets and or Cubs and Marlins rather in the bottom of the first. Cubs with the bases loaded as Randall Simon singles to left. Two runs will come home and score, giving the Cubs a 2-0 lead early on. Bottom of the second now, 3-0 Cubs. Sammy Sosa with a man on, and he sends this one deep to center field. It's not coming back. 495 feet into the Chicago night. That would give the Cubs a 5-0 lead. 
Bottom of the fifth now, Alex Gonzalez puts this one away with a deep shot to left just inside the foul pole, giving the Cubs a 10-0 lead. They would go on to win 12-3, tying the series at one apiece. Yankees and Red Sox now, top of the fourth, no score until David Ortiz gets a hold of one. Upper deck shot to right, giving the Red Sox a 2-0 advantage at that point. Top of the fifth, Todd Walker cranks one again to right. This one will bounce off the foul pole, or does it? Originally recorded a foul ball. Todd Walker wants the call. We'll give it to him. Red Sox go on to win it 5-2 to two to take a 1-0 lead in that series. Well, the Red Sox success didn't lie only in their bats, but also in their pitching. Knuckleballer Tim Wakefield brought his A game to Yankee Stadium and kept the New York hitters off balance for more than six innings. Red Sox closer Scott Williamson came in to wrap up the game for Boston, striking out two Yankees in a row in the ninth inning. But the big story of the night was the pitching of knuckleballer Tim Wakefield. At one point in the game, he retired 14 straight batters. We saw the same thing with Tim tonight that we, we've seen most of the season. What we go by mostly is the way uh, Mirabelli is catching the ball. Wakefield is, you know, you're hoping the thing just tumbles, but when you, you know, when you see it moving quickly in a downward, uh, you know, down, then you know it's, uh, it's a matter of, um, you know, you hope you catch one. Wakefield gave all the credit for the win to his offense, which hit three home runs during game one of the series. It's now time for the Studio One Sports Trivia question. Who was the first NFL player to score two two-point conversions in one game? It's a fine list of players for you. And a little hint, think of a former Detroit Lion. And that's the sports for now. Monty and Jill. All right. Thanks a lot, Greg. Coming up, man's best friend isn't so friendly anymore. We'll preview a movie where alien dogs try to invade Earth. Also, everyone can catch a cold, but once it develops into the flu, your life can be at risk. Coming up, we'll meet with the nurse who will talk to us about preventing this serious problem. Explore the educational opportunities available through the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. With just one phone call or a click of the mouse, you'll find high quality programs designed for today's adults. We have a large selection of continuing education courses that are available at a time and place that's convenient for you. Discover a world of learning through the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. The School of Engineering and Mines at UND has a long history of preparing students for successful careers. Through small classes and faculty involvement, students have unique opportunities to gain hands-on experience. Here students launch a weather balloon to test a remote imaging device destined for Earth orbit. Students can also become involved in wind energy and fuel cell projects, design, build and race a Formula One car, or even develop a camera that will generate agricultural images from the International Space Station. Find out for yourself how you can get involved at UND School of Engineering and Mines. University of North Dakota College of Business and Public Administration offers real degrees for real people. Our nationally recognized faculty can help you earn a master's degree in business through evening classes. Taking these evening classes were very convenient for me and that's how I was able to complete the program. We offer degrees for people who work, raise families and lead busy lives. The UND College of Business and Public Administration, real degrees for real people. Let the University of North Dakota become your strategic partner by providing your business with skills to enhance your workforce retention and productivity efforts. The UND Office of Workforce Development has extensive experience in conducting employee satisfaction research, workforce needs assessments, and the development of customized training materials. Call us for further information. Workforce Development, a service of the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. You're watching Studio One, honored by the Northwest Broadcast News Association for excellence in cable television.
The National Immunization Program says around 36,000 people died in the U.S. from the seasonal flu last year. Receiving proper vaccinations can save your life. Immunization Project Manager Kathy Dunn is here to talk with us about the importance of vaccinations. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Now a lot of people are wondering, who needs vaccinations? Actually, everyone needs vaccinations, and you need vaccinations throughout your lifetime. Uh, children less than two years of age get approximately 20 shots before they reach the age of two. And then the next time they need immunizations is when they start kindergarten and get their typical booster shots. Seventh grade is a time when kids can catch up the things that they didn't get as a child and also get their first tetanus booster. Sometimes when you go to college, there are a couple vaccines that you might need. And then finally, as adults, you need tetanus boosters throughout your life, annual influenza, and pneumococcal when you become 65 years of age or if you have a high-risk condition. And it goes on and on. <laughs> so you keep needing to get vaccinations throughout your whole life. Right. All right. Well, with this fall season coming upon us, what are the most important vaccinations to have, both adults and children? Well, when you think of fall, you do think of influenza and pneumococcal um, vaccine. So uh, that's the thing that we emphasize for children and adults. Uh, actually, this year, one of the new high-risk categories is healthy children, 6 to 23 months of age. They are at equal risk to complications from flu as those that are 65 years and older. So they've become a new high-risk group. Then we have um, children, adults, adolescents, anyone with a risk condition or who just wants to protect themselves from the flu. So this is what we should concentrate on in October, November, December. Gotcha. There are a lot of healthy people watching this thinking, I'm fine, I don't get sick very much, I don't need this. Why should they get this? Why is this serious? Well, even healthy people who get sick can suffer serious complications. And flu is one of those diseases that as a youngster you might think um, you don't have very many symptoms, you got over it. But uh, as you get older, you can certainly develop a serious side effect from any kind of disease, not just the flu. And so it's recommended to just protect yourself, protect your contacts, protect the community as a whole, um, get vaccinated. Where and when can anyone receive immunizations? Well, you can receive immunizations from your health care provider at clinics, from your public health departments, and in some states you can receive um, vaccine from your pharmacist. So a person, especially when we're talking about influenza, should call ahead, be sure that that person or that provider has the vaccine before you venture out to get it. Gotcha. And I hear you guys have a drive through clinic as well. Can you tell me a little bit about this? Yes. Well, in our effort to make uh, immunizations and especially influenza immunization easier for people in the community, uh, we have a drive through flu clinic. Uh, people just come in their cars, drive through, get a shot, and, and get a donut on their way out the door. <laughs> and this has proved to be convenient for the young people because they don't have to uh, take their children out of the car seats and park and, and bring them into a clinic. Also for the elderly, it saves standing in long lines and waiting for their turn to get their flu shot. So we have managed to eliminate a barrier there by having the drive through. That sounds pretty easy. Is this a unique program and why? Well, it's unique to our area and especially up north where it's a little colder. Uh, I believe they've done some drive throughs in uh, the southern part of the uh, country, but up here, um, because of the snow and the weather factors, it's a little unusual. But uh, it is an interesting program. Uh, all the uh, residents seem to enjoy coming through and the providers enjoy the challenge and it's something new, so it, it, it works to help raise the rates, protect the people. Well, that sounds like a pretty unique program you have going on there. And I heard once, and is, you must know, you didn't let me know if this is true, that not everybody needs flu shots? Well, there are certain people that are more at risk than others. And when we're talking about the flu, um, people 50 years of age and older, uh, people with chronic conditions such as chronic heart, uh, lung, liver problems, people with diabetes, people with asthma, pregnant women are at an increased risk. Um, people whose immune system is suppressed because of cancer or HIV. So there's a list of people that are at high risk. But then again, 
even healthy people should be concerned about protecting themselves from the flu. Well, that makes sense. And leaving with this question, what is the most important thing that we should know about immunizations, receiving them, that kind of thing? Well, there's a few things that come to mind. One of the things that a person needs to remember is that no vaccine is 100% effective. So you can take one step to protect yourself by being vaccinated. When we talk about the flu, there are a few other things that a person can do, and that includes staying home when you're sick. It's hard sometimes for people at work to stay home when they're sick, but you're doing your coworkers a favor by doing that. Also, if you're sneezing and coughing because flu is transmitted through the respiratory route, be sure to cover your nose and your mouth with a Kleenex. And then the all important, wash your hands. And one other thing um, to emphasize because of flu season is that it's not too late in November or December to get a flu shot. Well, Keep that in mind. Thank you very much for coming on the show and telling us all about this. You're welcome. Coming up, the jump from college to professional hockey is a major step in any player's career. We'll tell you the difficulties some players have in making the adjustment to the pros. Also, they come in different shapes, sizes, and colors. Everyone is familiar with gems, but no one knows them better than one certain person. Coming up, we'll see what a jeweler does every day. University of North Dakota. Let the University of North Dakota become your strategic partner by providing your business with skills to enhance your workforce retention and productivity efforts. The UND Office of Workforce Development has extensive experience in conducting employee satisfaction research, workforce needs assessments, and the development of customized training materials. Call us for further information. Workforce Development, a service of the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. Explore the educational opportunities available through the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. With just one phone call or a click of the mouse, you'll find high-quality programs designed for today's adults. We have a large selection of continuing education courses that are available at a time and place that's convenient for you. Discover a world of learning through the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. Man's best friend has been planning an invasion of Earth for thousands of years. This is the premise of the new canine film called Good Boy. The family comedy portrays dogs to have an out-of-this-world origin. Canine spies have been gathering information in preparation to invade the Earth. They were sent from the planet Sirius. Since none of the spies are returning, they took turn to their top military dog, Hubble, to get some answers. Soon after his arrival to Earth, he meets his new friend, Owen, who runs a dog walking service. Owen helps his new friend and the rest of the canine population to stay on the planet they love. The movie includes great visual effects, technology, and many hours of dog it's training. It's really incredible, incredible because they're all real. There's no animatronics except for one CGI. You know. Director John Hoffman chose dogs that are not always easy to train, but after endless hours he got every shot he wanted. The vocal talents for the dogs in the film include Matthew, Matthew Broderick, Delta Burke, and Cheech Marin. Good Boy hits theaters Friday, October 10th. Now it's time to take a look at the events happening in your area.
Forget about the chocolate and flowers. The words of a well-known song say that a diamond is a girl's best friend. Today we spend a day in the life of a jewelry store manager. Some people only get to enjoy the sparkle of diamonds on their birthdays, Christmas and Valentine's Day. But Jody McPherson gets to enjoy it every day. She is a jewelry store manager. She says her job is about more than making sales. When people say, I have this much that I would like to spend, when you're able to get them something beautiful for what they wanted to spend, it's rewarding like you can't imagine. Her typical day entails working on appraisals for jewelry insurance, speaking with jewelry vendors, and much more. Jody has the opportunity to follow couples through all <laughs> stages of their relationships. She helps people in dating relationships pick out gifts. Often, people shopping for their girlfriends seek the opinions of several people. I get some ideas and get their opinions on, on whether or not I was picking out something good for her or not. Jody also assists newly engaged couples. We've had proposals in here, that's really exciting. <laughs> but when you get to see the brides-to-be with, with their pieces, that either they've helped their significant other choose or that they've chosen on their own, uh, it's very exciting. And of course, she plays a role in helping married couples. Jody says that being located right next to a sporting goods store has advantages. Vertical. When he the comes out with his rifle, that it's only fair that she gets some treats too. So, so it does work well and we have people that will spend a lot of time looking at things and when he mentions how long do we have to look at this, she goes, well we won't talk about um, how long we had to look for your scope. Regardless of whether the purchase is for a significant other, a fiance or a spouse, when it is all wrapped up, it is sure to, to be a gift to be treasured. With photographer Stan Brand, this is Heidi Sire reporting for Studio One. Jody says that Christmas is hands down the busiest time of the year at the jewelry store. She also says the economy affects jewelry sales because it is considered a luxury to buy such items. Guitars have been around for centuries and have since taken on many different shapes. Coming up we'll see how one man invented a unique guitar. Also, age can sometimes be a challenge, but not for one three-time Grammy nominee. Coming up we'll see a 74-year-old man play some jazz. That story plus news, sports and the weather in the next half hour of Studio One. North Dakota has been home to many successful entrepreneurs. George Bull and his partners found value in farina, the whitest part of wheat, and created cream of wheat. Patrick Haggerty is the founder of one of the nation's high-tech giants, Texas Instruments. And Raymond Rood's product has been used in every Olympic competition since 1960. He is responsible for the modern diving board. Ryan Foltz is the first graduate of the UND Entrepreneurship Program. Are you next? The University of North Dakota Alumni Association and Foundation, together with thousands of alumni and friends, are making a difference at UND. Thanks to generous private support, many students have experienced the rich history, tradition, and spirit of the University of North Dakota. UND alumni and friends understand the importance of education and are proud to be part of UND's growth and success. Learn how your gift to the UND Foundation can benefit you and your university. You can make a difference. Earn a degree in engineering while you continue to work. The University of North Dakota's Distance Engineering Degree Program offers the only ABET accredited undergraduate degree program at a distance. Instructors and classes are delivered to you through online lectures and condensed on-campus laboratories. It's convenient, it's flexible, and it's a quality education. UND Continuing Education and the School of Engineering and Mines. Teaming up to bring quality education to your door. Tradition runs deep among American Indian people. One of those traditions is helping others. At the University of North Dakota, American Indian Student Services is dedicated to helping students succeed. Our support services include tutoring and financial aid assistance. We have more American Indian programs than any other university in the U.S., making UND a leader in Indian education. Be a part of our tradition. Call 1-800-CALL-UND. From the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, this is Studio One.
Welcome back to Studio One. Thanks for joining us today. Well, later on the show, you're going to see a segment that we did when we went out to people in the community and asked them what they thought about President Bush running for re-election. And everybody has an opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. And according to the National Council on Public Polls, each citizen sees around about 250 polls in the media each year. Quite a bit. You're probably wondering, why haven't I been interviewed? Well, what they do is they take the 200 million people that qualify to vote and they take a sample size of only a thousand people to okay. represent them. So you'd be lucky if you were chosen in a poll. It's like winning the lottery. Okay. Chances are slim. Okay. So that's Good. how it works. Well, we'll look forward to that, that segment coming up. Also in the next 30 minutes on Studio One, a piece of metal or a shard of glass can be vital clues to someone who investigates airline accidents. We'll tell you about how people learn these special techniques. Also, many have tried to play a musical instrument. Coming up, we'll meet a man who has mastered the jazz trumpet. And popular music varies from the screaming sounds of a rock band to the twanging of a country guitar. Coming up, we'll talk to a man who invented a guitar that can change its look and sound. Before we get to all of that, here's today's news with Sarah Spencer. Thanks, Monty and Jill. Two men suspected of kidnapping and robbing Kathleen Gregg are now in the custody of New Jersey police. Kathleen is the wife to U.S. Senator Judge, Judd Gregg rather, of New Hampshire. Two men broke into the Gregg home and abducted Kathleen on Tuesday. She was tied up and forced to withdraw money from her bank account and then escaped shortly after. On Wednesday night, New Jersey police officers spotted the car in question and, sh excuse me, and a short chase ensued. One suspect was caught outside the car. The driver fled and was apprehended after driving into a body of water. In Philadelphia on Thursday, the Liberty Bell was moved to its new home. The bell was transported to a new facility to allow more room for exhibits and displays. The new site is about 1,000 feet away from where it was previously kept. This new location has sparked some controversy because George Washington likely held slaves where the bell is now located. The bell is considered very fragile for its size. Wireless motion sensors will monitor the slightest changes in the bell's famous crack. The Federal Communications Commission is looking to expand on its rules regarding media ownership, and this has many worried. Since the Telecommunications Act of 1996, regulations have been in place that allow for a single company to own many broadcast outlets in a community. Under the newly proposed rules, a single company would be able to own even more radio and TV stations than it could under the current regulations. Opponents of the proposal argue that if the new rules are implemented, there will be less competition. They say programming will suffer. Clear Channel Communications currently owns more than 1,200 stations, raising concerns among many. I'm hoping it's gonna, we're going to go backwards again. At some point, I think radio you know, we're losing audience and I think at some point they're going to realize, you know, we're not personal anymore. We're not touching the people the way we should be. House Democrats are trying to force a vote making a resolution that will repeal new media ownership rules. The Senate voted by a large margin to support the repeal, which has gone on to the House of Representatives where it is currently under review. New research shows women who get breast implants have a higher suicide rate. According to the American Medical Association, women who undergo breast enlargement surgery are three times more likely to commit suicide. The suicide rate of breast implant patients is more than 400 percent higher than rates among women who have other cosmetic surgeries. Researchers say the problem may be related to body dys dysmorphic disorder, which can happen when a person is obsessed with the slightest defect in their appearance. To help curb the rates, some surgeons are now requiring a psychological examination before surgery. Investigating airplane accidents can be a difficult job. Sometimes important clues are lost during a crash. Investigators are then left with only a partial picture to understand the reasons behind an accident. The airline industry is trying to change this through training. The wreckage from the crash is real. The causes are unknown and pilots are looking for the clues to solve the mystery. 25 pilots from the United States and Canada are at this site near Grand Forks, North Dakota to learn about aircraft accident investigation techniques. This is the second time the University of North Dakota has hosted this investigation course. The training focuses around an outside classroom developed by the Airlines Pilots Association. While we teach them how, to, how an investigation goes, this actually lets them play it out and see how it goes in the field. 
The crash site is an exact copy of an airplane accident that happened in the Sierra Nevada mountains five years ago. The pilots in the course act as aircraft accident investigators. They work in teams to search the ground for clues. Every piece of the aircraft can aid investigators in solving the crash. Every accident is an opportunity to uh, learn new things uh, about the mistakes people make or the mistakes that organizations make that, that result uh, in unfortunate accidents. What are those holes showing? Pulled right out. The on-site investigation is only part of the overall course. Pilots also look at voice recorders, air traffic control tapes, and weather reports to understand the causes of the crash. The investigation and the class so far has been going excellent. We've gotten nothing but uh, positive feedback and praise from the students for the facilities, the UND staff that we've been working with, and even the wreckage. Siebert hopes the program will make the skies safer for tomorrow's pilots. It's an opportunity to learn something and then end up turning around and implementing something that will promote aviation safety that results in fewer accidents. And it's that continued commitment to safety that keeps these investigators sifting through the wreckage. With photographer Jessica Denny, I'm Philip Zubrod reporting for Studio One News. UND plans to expand next year's course to offer to other flight schools. It will also offer the training to aircraft manufacturers, law enforcement, and insurance companies. And that's news for now. Monty and Jill. Thanks, Sarah. Well, earlier in the program, BJ was saying that the temperatures were going to get back to normal, which means a little bit cooler than we've been oh, having. It has been beautiful it out lately. Been. Let's go to BJ Eisen at the Regional Weather Information Center, and he can tell us all about it. Well, Monty and Jill, like, yeah, like I said, it's going to be getting much cooler around much of the country. Let's take a look at that national forecast and get a little bit better idea about precip across the country. We do see scattered thunder showers and rain showers across much of the U.S. as we put this into motion. Basically, it's going to be a hit and miss week between uh, sunny days and rainy days. So we do see some showers down off to the south. Uh, some systems moving across the north, pretty fast moving systems. So it's, like I said, it's going to be a splash and dash kind of week where you'll either get rain showers one day and probably sun the next. So many people measure rainfall in their very own backyards with their very own rain gauges, but they need to make sure to avoid some common yard obstacles in order to get an accurate measurement. The sound of farm trucks roar down the road. This is a sure sign the harvest is underway. During spring planning, it is vital that the crops get enough moisture. To keep track of moisture, farmers set up rain gauges in their yard. However, a rain gauge should be put in the right place to be accurate. You want to place them, uh, a rain gauge to be placed away from any obstructions like trees, buildings, fences. The National Weather Service gathers rainfall information with more accurate devices. They use two types of gauges, a standard and an automated. A standard gauge is a basic model that collects the rain and is then measured with a ruler. An automated gauge gathers the rain which is automatically measured and recorded by a computer. There are many styles of rain gauges you can buy. Just a simple one will do. A, a really good uh, accumulation gauge uh, that has, has resolutions that you can down to a hundred, hundredth of an inch. It is possible to have an efficient rain gauge on a small budget. Just be sure to put it in a place that will ensure an accurate reading. Reporting for Studio One, this is John Nowoski. Well, we can't emphasize it enough to have that rain gauge in a very safe place away from trees, buildings, and any other shrubbery that will deflect the rain away from that rain gauge, and that way it will ensure you an accurate measurement. Here's a recap of your Studio One Weather IQ question. Which country is credited for developing the first known rain gauge? And the answer is C. Korea, Monty and Jill, uh, I wanted to test your uh, knowledge a little bit further. What year do you think th that happened in? The 18, 1700s? Yeah, sure. Something like that? No well, clue. <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking, but that's actually a little too modern. It was way back in 1442. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you very much, BJ. All right. Wasn't so the answer I was expecting? Long time ago. <laughs> well, not that long. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go now back to sports with Greg Anchors. Thanks, Monty and Jill. Making it to the NHL on a full-time basis can be a difficult transition. Many players spend years in the minor leagues just trying to get their chance to play with the big boys. For many college hockey players, the chance to compete in the NHL is the dream of a lifetime. However, very few ever make it to the Premier League. 
Even players who excel in college sometimes find it difficult to make the transition to the NHL. Everybody gets a little bigger, a little faster, a little smarter. So um, it's something that uh, doesn't happen overnight, and it took some time, but uh, eventually. You know, you get your feet wet and, and uh, get a little confidence and, and everything works out okay. Jeff Panzer has been trying to crack the St. Louis Blues roster since he graduated in 2001. Panzer was a standout player in college, however he has been stuck in the minors trying to adjust to the different style of play. College hockey in itself is probably a faster game, but uh, the, pro, the pro is such a, uh, a systematic game where, uh, I mean, you just see out there, there's not a lot of turnovers, the neutral zone is clogged. You know, you don't get a lot of three on twos, especially with this, you know, the, the red line in place. It uh, clogs up the game, you got to be more patient with the puck and things like that. For many college athletes, they're just out to have some fun. However, as players quickly realize, playing in the NHL is much more like a job. Instead of doing, uh, going out there and scoring two goals, maybe my job is to make sure I don't make a mistake, and make sure they don't score. I mean, it's different. One problem that plagues newcomers to the NHL is injuries. Many times athletes that come straight from college aren't prepared for the long schedule of the NHL. College teams play about 40 games a year, however in the pros teams rack up nearly 100 games in a season. If a player can resist injury and adjust to the style of play in the NHL, then maybe their dream of playing with the big boys can come true. This is Corey Morlock reporting for Studio One Sports. Panzer was called up to play several exhibition games with the Blues. However, he will be spending the beginning of the year in the minors. Now the answer to this week's Studio One Sports Trivia question. Who was the first NFL player to score two two-point conversions in one game? That would be C, Brett Perriman back in 1994. And he was the number two wide receiver for the Lions uh, for that season behind Herman Moore, who was actually answered D on there. And that's the sports for now. Monty and Jill. Thanks a lot, Greg. Well, the U.S. president is called the leader of the free world. President Bush has decided to run for re-election in 2004. Later, we'll hear people's reactions on his announcement. Also, playing an instrument takes dedication. We'll meet a man who's been dedicated for more than six decades to the trumpet. There are many things to be found at the University of North Dakota School of Law. You will find a place with small class settings, an affordable place that offers student interaction with both the state and federal court systems. You will find a school that has averaged over 90% placement for its graduates the past five years. But most importantly, you will find the skills and experience you'll need throughout your legal career. Find your future at the University of North Dakota School of Law. Explore the educational opportunities available through the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. With just one phone call or a click of the mouse, you'll find high-quality programs designed for today's adults. We have a large selection of continuing education courses that are available at a time and place that's convenient for you. Discover a world of learning through the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. Watching Studio One from the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. In recent months, President Bush's approval ratings have dropped. The war in Iraq, an increasing deficit, and the tragedy of September 11th have changed the U.S. citizens' views on their president. We wanted your thoughts on President Bush and whether or not he should will he will be reelected. They've got ten Democrat candidates running and there isn't one of them to hold a candle to him. 
I think there's there needs to be a change, or at least if he can't change, he needs somebody else needs to be in there. I think he's done a good job for the most part. Maybe he's got some weak points on economy to work on, but I think he's going to get reelected. Well, he's done poorly over the years, and I don't think he would be getting elected on account of this war. Um, I think he's done a pretty good job. I think the presidency is a tough position, so I don't know. I feel like we've made a lot of gains in the last few years. He's not favored uh, as much as he was at one time. The polls showed. Okay. So I would rather see somebody else in there. But I think a lot of people are uh, unhappy with the way he's done his job. But I guess I'm not the president, so. Music changes moods. It can help motivate, sign signify something, or alter a feeling. Many musicians have made a large effect on their listeners as well. We should have. Yeah, we should have. We but he stunned. just drove slower. Yeah, just... This is a typical scene outside of a rock concert. <laughs> but these people are not waiting for any rock concert. They are waiting to see a 74-year-old jazz musician play in a small Minnesota town. Joey Urjevic drove hundreds of miles to see a legendary trumpet player. It's my 14th year of going to concerts. I've got a dozen t-shirts and the hat. And I just, uh, it's just great to see this kind of jazz performance. Joey and his friends are waiting to see Maynard Ferguson. I, we've been all day, I put the t-shirt on, we were chasing the bus down the street and waving, waving at all the people going by and I just, I, I, I can't explain that. Dedicated fans like these can help make careers for many musicians. Who has the tickets? This way to Maynard. Maynard Ferguson has surely made his own career by being a nominee for three Grammys. He made famous songs like Maria in the musical West Side Story. Maynard started out playing piano and violin, but was quickly mesmerized by the trumpet. Uh, we went to a church social, and uh, um, I heard a little boy play a cornet solo, and I uh, turned to my dad and I said, hey dad, get me one of those. Maynard says many people ask how he plays trumpet so high. You know, I have opera singers that ask me that, and uh, 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 of course, it's uh, the control of the airstream, and uh, 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 I stand like a, a, a good weightlifter. Concerts like Ferguson's feature soloists, and crowds enjoy the energy. And Joey knows he is in the midst of a jazz legend. I'm Adria Enzrud, reporting for Studio One. Maynard started his first jazz band at the age of 16. All the band members were twice his age at the time. Maynard and his Big Bop Nouveau band are currently on a nationwide U.S. tour. Guitars play a lead in role in the music today. Musicians search for the perfect sound through different styles of music. Next, we'll talk with a man who's invented a unique interchangeable guitar. No matter what your schedule, no matter when you work, no matter what job you have now, this is your opportunity to accomplish your goals. Degrees After Hours at the University of North Dakota can work around your busy schedule. Bachelor and Master's degrees are earned through convenient, flexible, and high quality classes. Complete degrees are available online through correspondence study and on weekends and evenings. Earn a degree on your terms with Degrees After Hours at the University of North Dakota. Let the University of North Dakota become your strategic partner by providing your business with skills to enhance your workforce retention and productivity efforts. The UND Office of Workforce Development has extensive experience in conducting employee satisfaction research, workforce needs assessments, and the development of customized training materials. 
Call us for further information. Workforce Development, a service of the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. The UND College of Business and Public Administration is reaching out to rural America. The Government Rural Outreach Initiative is working to connect you with important information you need. Use the internet to access government services such as employment opportunities, license renewals, applications for government benefits, and much more. The Government Rural Outreach Initiative is funded with the support of the North Dakota Congressional Delegation. To learn how we are helping you get connected, visit go.ndgrow.com. The School of Engineering and Mines at UND has a long history of preparing students for successful careers. Through small classes and faculty involvement, students have unique opportunities to gain hands-on experience. Here students launch a weather balloon to test a remote imaging device destined for Earth orbit. Students can also become involved in wind energy and fuel cell projects, design, build and race a Formula One car, or even develop a camera that will generate agricultural images from the International Space Station. Find out for yourself how you can get involved at UND School of Engineering and Mines. Guitars are centuries old and have many different shapes, sizes, and sounds. Musicians often buy many guitars to play different sounds for an audience. Today we'll talk with guitarist and inventor Mark Hendrickson, who created Meg, the first modular electric guitar. Thank you very much for coming on the show nice today, to be Mark. Here, Marty. Thank you. What is Meg? Meg stands for modular electric guitar, and uh, it's a, uh, a response to a challenge that was uh, put out to me by a young man in a wheelchair when I was teaching in special education. He needed a guitar that fit into a wheelchair, and uh, since I had been working with uh, some Space Age reinforcement materials, it was pretty easy to go home and make a two-component guitar, and that's the modular part of Meg. Okay. What went into the development of this from the stage where someone said, I want to be able to play a guitar in a wheelchair yeah. to now? Yeah. The, the very first thing we had to do was to um, sort of assemble our thoughts, and the way I did that was by writing a patent. And that's, that was a very good exercise to do that. And then uh, we had to make the, uh, the handmade uh, prototypes for it. That led to the uh, realization that if we wanted to have something modular, it uh, stood to reason that they were going to have to fit together and we needed some precision. So uh, we went to um, uh, computer numerical control routing for the, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for the instrument. And now each and every one of them comes out the same. Okay. Yeah. Now what makes Meg unique? Well, there's a number of things. Uh, more than anything else, I think uh, the, the uniqueness comes from uh, the ability that we have, because it's a component system, to uh, supply the, uh, the instrumentalist with anything that he or she requires uh, in a guitar, in an electric guitar. Um, there's a number of serendipitous things that happened along the way, and, uh, and more than anything else, it's been, uh, it's, been, it's been kind of an adventure of possibilities. Well, I'm kind of curious to hear what it sounds like. Can, oh, can, can you just play a little bit here? Yeah, this is a, this is a six string um, hardtail, and uh, so it sounds like a normal guitar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know I've seen you do this once already, and I'm excited to get to this. You're going to rip it apart now. I am. Okay. Show us, show okay. us how you can do that. Um, it happens very quickly. If you're on stage, it can uh, be facilitated by your roadie. There you are. Thank you. And this is a baritone neck here, and it happens to be a black one. Uh, I strung it up uh, for, for baritone so you could, you could really hear the difference between, between the two of them. Now, this one, a uh, baritone neck, is tuned four or five steps lower. Whoa. There we are. There we go. So and it's much lower. Much lower. I don't know if, the, if, uh, if your viewers can actually hear it, but... Yeah. yeah. Now, in a matter of well, less than I'd say 20, 30 seconds, you totally changed out a guitar. Yeah, yeah. That's the fun part. That, yeah. <laughs> that's we, the we fun don't know part. What we're going to do next? Well, what are the advantages to a musician to be able to do something like this? Well, right now the the baritone sound is is hotter than a pistol, with uh, especially with uh, um, some of the of the rock bands, heavy metal uh, bands, and um, that's only one of the next we can do. Though I'm working on a, a 12 string. Um, um, short scale 
So the neck is only going to be this long, but it has 12 strings on it. And uh, just to exactly what that will do, I'm not sure, but that was, that was the way they requested it. So it sounds like there's a lot of different options you can have with this. What are yeah. some of the extra options you can put on? Well, we can also change the, uh, the body style. To, uh, to facilitate the, uh, um, the owner's wishes. Uh, we can make any style we want, as a matter of fact, and when, make any size. Or, and then the other part of it is the adaptive component. We can also make it so that it fits into a wheelchair, or hospital sure. bed, or, uh, or any kind of other adaptive equipment. So yeah. there's a lot of different sizes and shapes you can have to it. Yeah. How much does something like this cost? Well, it starts at about 1000 and uh, goes up from there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see Meg guitars being used all across the nation oh, pretty soon? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I, I think we shall soon. As a matter of fact, uh, it's uh, it's being uh, repped down in uh, in the Twin Cities. We have a wonderful, aggressive uh, uh, bunch of uh, of salespeople down there that are very much behind the Meg concept. Good. Yeah. Well, good good luck with uh, the rest Thank of you. your marketing with this wonderful you, invention. It's very Thank neat. You. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. You're watching Studio One from the University of North Dakota. We'll be back right after this. Tradition runs deep among American Indian people. One of those traditions is helping others. At the University of North Dakota, American Indian Student Services is dedicated to helping students succeed. Our support services include tutoring and financial aid assistance. We have more American Indian programs than any other university in the U.S., making UND a leader in Indian education. Be a part of our tradition. Call 1-800-CALL-UND. Let the University of North Dakota become your strategic partner by providing your business with skills to enhance your workforce retention and productivity efforts. The UND Office of Workforce Development has extensive experience in conducting employee satisfaction research, workforce needs assessments, and the development of customized training materials. Call us for further information. Workforce Development, a service of the Division of Continuing Education at the University of North Dakota. Students in this interactive class at the University of North Dakota are learning together with other students from across the state. UND is committed to helping students take courses and even earn degrees without leaving home. I'm Charles Capcella, president of the University of North Dakota. For information on how you can get a UND education wherever you live, check our website at www.und.edu. The Graduate School at the University of North Dakota is the premier graduate school of the Northern Great Plains, offering advanced degrees in more than 50 fields of study. Our innovative and flexible programs give full-time students, as well as working professionals, the opportunity to study under the guidance of nationally and internationally recognized faculty. Advance your career with a master's or doctoral degree from the Graduate School at the University of North Dakota. The UND College of Business and Public Administration is reaching out to rural America. The Government Rural Outreach Initiative is working to connect you with important information you need. Use the Internet to access government services such as employment opportunities, license renewals, applications for government benefits, and much more. The Government Rural Outreach Initiative is funded with the support of the North Dakota Congressional Delegation. To learn how we are helping you get connected, visit go.ndgrow.com. Tune in next week on Studio One. Flying can be a thrill for many people, especially for children. We'll see how one group is giving kids the opportunity to see the skies. Well, I don't know about you, but that guitar, it's just amazing to think how much time, effort, and smarts went into inventing a brand new guitar. I have a lot of appreciation for people right. like and that. It's really neat the way he can switch it out so quickly. Kind of neat. Well, we're going to leave you now with pictures of the, that event held in celebration of the 100th year of flight. From all of us here at Studio One, have a great week.